Hello YouTube. Um, now, last time I did an unboxing video, which was the Hatton's Andrew Barclay number 10. Um, I was running on a uh, Hornby track mat on the floor in the living room because I didn't yet have my uh, loft layout started. Uh, I was also filming on the digital SLR, which was not the best for doing, as it turned out, um, close-up shots with um, a lot of uh, zooming in and out, so uh, or focusing. Um, so we've got that fixed a bit now. I'm on the um, camcorder, and also, if I come over here, I've got the beginnings of a model railway layout um yeah it's mostly under construction here but what we're unboxing today is the latest addition to my collection it's the hornby k1 um so we're going to take a look at this so first thing you notice before we open the box it does say on there i don't think you can see that minimum radius 538 millimeters um now if we take a look at the Hornby track diagram I'm probably gonna just like uh upside down. <laughs> probably just gonna put a, a copy of this on the screen for you but um if I can but four hundred and thirty eight mils is a second radius curve so it doesn't like first radius that's uh, 371 millimeter curves according to the box so we'll see how it does on the actual layouts now let's open this up I'm right, gonna need two hands for this so let's just put the camera down A lot of information there on the on the back of the uh, of the box about the history of the class. You can't even see what I'm doing there. Cardboard sleeve is quite stiff. <clears throat> so first impressions that looks really quite nice. <laughs> but how do you get into it? I think this, just, this is just going to pull out of here. There we are. And we can see on the top, there's a detail pack in here. Um, that's going to, yeah, okay, so this is going to slide out here. There's the instructions have just fallen out. And that's the detail pack there. And then I think. It's certainly well packaged. Oh. And ta da! Right, let's have a look at this. So that is K1 steam locomotive in tender, usual sort of instructions. I think it does show you how to fit the. If I can tilt that up a little bit. It does show you on here how to fit all the accessories and, and whatnot. Um, so we're going to I'm going to take it out of the box and set it up on the track and see how it does. So closer look at the engine here. Um, as is common with the newer Hornby locos, it's got the, the smaller type of uh, tension lock coupler. Um, I don't have the best lighting up here, so it's really hard to show you. <laughs> Plus, it being black, it's really hard to show you all the detail on this, but it's quite a good model. Now, let's see how she runs. Now, I'm going to have to stretch over here to my control that. Straight off. And 
is derailed. All right. But already, I mean, straight out of the box, very, very good uh, performance. Let's see if we can go through this point again. No, okay, it's derailing on the point. So that may be the problem with the uh, curve radius. Very close couple of tender. Also, there's a piece of. Oh, sorry, it's stuck in the back of it, which might not be helping. Right. That's a, a tiny, minimum amount of power on there, and it's going really well. Okay, it made it through that curve, okay. Right, so fantastic performance already barely any power on that and it was just going really quite smoothly along um, trouble negotiating those points but uh, so far pretty good performance let's try it with a train I've just brought my train um, out of the station by hand um, so you can see the, the coupling a little bit better um, this is a mainline wagon, so it's got the uh, um, the mainline type coupler on it, which is slightly bigger than the um, the newer Hornby ones, but not as big as the old Hornby uh, and Lima ones. Very, very fast. Even a tiny amount of power on there, and it's quite quite quick. But yet yeah, seems to have no trouble pulling up, oh, and it's come off. Right, something's gone wrong with the coupler there, I think. And it's just not made around the corner and the engine's actually derailed. I think I may have to um, make some adjustments. Can I see that any further? Right. I may have to make some adjustments to this layout in terms of the curve radius. Because I think it is struggling around the, the, uh, the tight corners. But I think um, what's happened there is because it's got such a small tension lock coupler, it's it's pulled it off going around the corner. This is where the problem is, as it's going around the corner, it's it's hitting its own tender. Um, and that's what's causing it to derail. At least. Let's see what it's like on full power. Oh, let's not. <laughs> Let, let's let's put it back on the rails. So it's not like Smoky Joe fast, but. You get a fair bit of speed up. Right, let's back it back onto this train then again and see if it'll take the whole train this time. I'm concerned about the noises making going over that set of points there. Let's see what's happened. So doesn't even go around the corner there, I think it was just the... I think it's hit the points the wrong way and the tender has derailed. Yeah, the tender has derailed. Right, so let's... Oh, I'm going to sit the camera down here and... Okay, so this time with a full train coming around that corner, and it's um, it's, it's lost that heat and it's uh, spinning its wheels, which is not much better than uh, oh, and then it's derailed. So it really doesn't like taking this corner. 
with the train on at all. You can see there the, the centre wheel, uh, centre driving wheel came off there. Let's try that again. <laughs> and the uh, okay, that's a that's a problem with the wagon rather than the the loco. I'm going to back it up. I'm going to try and take this corner again and see what happens. Nope, nope. Okay, a little bit more of a run up needed, I think. And again, it's off. So, yep, I think the warning about first radius curves on the box definitely um, to be heeded. Uh, I think modifications of our track is required right so I think some modifications to the track may be needed here um, because it's obviously struggling with the tight corners um, and as far as I can tell it's just hitting its own tender on the subject of the tender if we look underneath um, you can see the tender is permanently coupled and there is also wires going uh, between the local and the tender um, now by the weight of it I can tell the motors in the in the local rather than in the tender so I don't know whether the uh, wires to the tender are for DCC or for um, pickup I don't see any pickups on the tender wheels so I think it may be just for a, a DCC decoder but um, yeah, that's a, a bit a bit strange, that one. Um, let's try and get it back on the track, shall we? No, then. So it goes... It, it goes backwards over there. Uh, it goes backwards over there, no problem. Forward. Well, I went all right this time. Um, hmm, strange. Okay, I'm going to bring it back. Okay, so, something's off. Oh, something's off. I made it that time, okay. So just being a bit moody, I guess. Very strange. Um hmm. The only thing with my uh, layout here is it's uh, it's an end-to-end -end run, so it's not. Uh, I can't just run the run the train round laps. But I can bring it back and forth like that. And put it back in the station. So I'm going to film it film it leaving the station now. Let's see how it goes over these. A bit of a zigzag going on here. Oop. Right. Okay, so we're going to leave, film it leaving the station. See if it see how it copes over this uh, zigzag. Seems to be okay at slow speed. I think there's one wagon derailed there. That's more of a problem with the wagon than the, the loco. And then it's caught in this hill again. Very responsive to the controls there. So 
a little bit more power coming out this time. That same wagon is off again. Right. So we've seen it run uh, with the wagon with the um, mainline coupler. But uh, have a look up with the old. Well, this is a this is a Lima wagon, so it's got the larger. I get an overhead shot. Oh, it's too dark. It doesn't like that. But this has got the um, the older Lima style coupler, the big one. So let's see if it'll pull that without any complaints. And that seems to be okay. And coming back the way. I think the trick is as long as you don't jerk it, it seems to be uh, okay. It was even going all the way back in the station. Right, let's bring it out again. Gently accelerating up to the hill, around that corner. Yeah, so it's made it around the corner a couple of times now. So, fantastic. Um, right. More of a challenge now. I've set the points for the loop, so it's got more of a zigzag to go through, or a chicane, call it what you like. Will it make that through that without derailing? Uh, uh. The brake van won't. <laughs> right, that's, that's. Is that okay? Is that still on the rails? It appears to be. So, let's pull it. Back out again. A bit more power to get up there. Oh, yeah, just over the hump. Okay. Now my camera is deciding not to focus. Right, so I've got a couple of passenger coaches out now. So Let's see what it's like on a passenger train. If we just back that up. Slowly, slowly, slowly. It's very at slow speeds it's very still very fast. Um, but I think I think we're hooked up. Quick check it's not derailed. Right. So, LNER Teak Bogey Coaches. Have an advantage with them. A little bit of power to go up the hill there. Smoothing around the corner. And away it goes. No problems at all. Uh, until it hits the dead section on the track. And then back into the station. Very, very abrupt stop. It's from from zero to go is is very, very abrupt. Like it goes quite fast, but barely any power input. Um, and then once you get it up to speed, it pretty much stays there there's uh it's it, it's weird how it responds to the controls it's like it's it's either go or stop there's no there's no real fine adjustment um to it uh but it does it runs really well um there's just you know obviously i mean you know i was running my great western collet on this track earlier and it would barely budge 
this is obviously brand new at the box everything's working fine um, and even on rather well, if you track it just picks up and goes no problem but there's uh, very little speed control it's either it's either everything or nothing now um, let's uh, let's take it off the track and have a look at some of the, the details on it. So I've brought the uh, engine over to my uh, workbench for a, a better look in the light so we can have a look at some of the details. Obviously lamps, uh, lamp irons on the front there. There is um, space to fit a front coupling but it's, it's not fitted um, you've got to fit it yourself it does come in the detail pack um, it's got the diamonds uh, oh, there we are uh, North British works plate there there's all you all you all your valve gear fully detailed coming back to the cab it's hard to see inside you can't really take the tender off without uh, unplugging the wires um, it's got doors on there you can't I think they are just slightly movable you can see the bucket seats inside um, and you can see a detailed back head with uh, a very large prominent red regulator handle um, and then obviously tender, coal and brake hose hooks on the back of the tender buffers sprung buffers that's neat look at that sprung buffers, that's a fantastic detail there and same on the front, yeah. So it's got sprung buffers, which is probably a good thing with the uh, problems that it has stopping and hooking up to stock. So it's a beautiful, well detailed engine. Uh, blackened wheels. So a little bit about the history, and I'm going to just read you what it says on the box here. Um, inspired by Thompson's rebuilt Gresley K4, in which it was reclassified as a K1-1, AH Peppercorn took advantage of uh, Thompson's retirement in 1946 to develop Thompson's design into the K1 class. The K1 class, which was made up of 70 locomotives, were all built in Glasgow at the North British Locomotive Company's Park Works over a 10-month period between May 1949 and March 1950. As was the North British Locomotive Company's practice, all of the class were sent to Eastfield Shed, Glasgow, for running in before being sent to England, where they were used for both freight and express pass passenger workings. 30 of the class were sent to the eastern region, while the remaining 40 were dispatched to the northeastern region. Many of the northeastern K1s were often seen as far north as Edinburgh and early on in their working life were regularly used on the West Highland Line. A significant number of those allocated to the eastern region were based at March. All of the class were fitted with electric lighting and self-cleaning smoke boxes identified with an SC plate situated just beneath the shed plate with others being fitted with AWS. The first 50 K1 locomotives were outshot in black with British Railways emblazoned on the tender while the remaining 20 were released with the early BR emblem, which we see here. Uh, from 1957, all of the class received the BR crest. Oh, so this, is, this is the BR crest, um, so this is the later variant, was the um, early ones, it was the uh, bicycling lion, wasn't it, with the... Um, line sitting on top of a wheel rather than the uh, this is the later um, crest which was uh, colloquially the ferret and dartboard or the the line holding a wheel um, 
So as described, the class were used throughout the former LNER network as they were proven to be an incredible mixed traffic locomotive. Each of the class was paired with a 4,200 gallon tender as used with the LNER and BR class B1 locomotive. So the, the tender is identical to that on a B1. During the early to mid 1950s, the K1s were being transferred from the Great Eastern section of the Eastern region with the results that by 1961 only eight remained at March. However, by the middle of 1962, these had been moved to Retford and Doncaster. Withdrawals of the K1s began in December 1962, but it took a full five years before the last locomotive, 6205, was withdrawn from service on the Eastern region in 1967. Luckily, 6205 survived into preservation and can be seen operating at the time of writing on the North Yorkshire Moors Railway. Locomotive 62065, which is this one, entered traffic allocated to Darlington Shed on January 23rd, 1950, and in June that year the engine was transferred to Stockton Shed, where it spent nearly nine years. A short spell at Low Moor between June and August 1959 was followed by a final allocation to York, where 62065 spent the rest of its service life. Sulfur scrap to aid drapers of a hull on July 4th, 1967. The locomotive was finally caught up on August 28th, 1967. So, barely 20 years. Not even 20 years in, in, in service. Um, but uh, you can see there's, you know, the obvious... Um, LNER design heritage there in the in the shape of the um, parallel boiler and the uh, the cab very si very similar to a B1 very similar to um, most of the, uh, the Pacifics um, such as the the A1 and uh, A2 Pacifics. So yeah, great uh, great little engine. Um, I'd definitely give it a, shall we say, a 7 out of 10 for this one. Um, great detail, great, um, good size and power. The only problems uh, being the the lack of um, controllability um, and obviously the, the problems going around corners. Um, but I think if you if you take it slow, it seems to take the take the corners well. If you take it slow, it, it does manage the corners. Um, but I think if you've got if you're going to buy one of these, it's best if you have less tight curves on your uh, on your layout. So that's it, the Hornby K1. So that's uh, all for this video. Uh, if you'd like to see more, don't forget to uh, subscribe. Um, I might be doing more of these unboxing videos in the future. And if you enjoyed it, click a click the uh, click the like button, and I'll see you later.